This video has been made possible by Hey Gears. So I'm starting a new project. A personal project is something I haven't done in a long time. Just something to make, just for the fun of making it. I enjoy designing and making all of my automotive products and also being involved in custom client projects as well. But I want to take some time and make something, just something new from the ground up. The concept is to make a wireless charging stand for my phone and take an automotive design approach to it. I also want to incorporate forged carbon into the project as well. I've gone through my collection of reference images and compiled together any that I think align with the vision I've got for the design of the stand. This is to give me some inspiration for the design moving forward. So the first stage to this is the ideation process. I've already got a fairly good idea of how the front profile is going to look, but not a complete image. So I'm starting with getting as many rough sketches and rough variations down as I can so I can start properly envisioning the design. If I overthink the design at this early stage, I tend to get stuck in my head. So I'm literally just running with whatever comes out and I'm moving on to another version. I'm not putting any real focus on ergonomics or functionality at this stage either. I'm just trying to get those ideas down. The two main elements to the stand is the front profile, which will make up the front body and a pad that the MagSafe charger will sit inside as I don't want the charger to be seen. So really I'm just trying to find a shape I like, making sure proportions of the pad and the body feel right. Once I finish there, I'll take some of those rough sketches I like and start refining them a bit further. I'll just keep following this process until I've refined it as much as I need to before I start modeling it. I don't like to refine things down too much in the ideation stage. I found that if I spend too long perfecting sketches, I get stuck at this stage. I personally find it easier to get a rough final idea together and then move into fusion as early as I can to start refining it there. I've drawn up a couple of different views to give it some dimension and so I can see more of the final form. As it's all started to come together, I have been a little bit more conscious of the ergonomics and any possible constraints that I might have. I've roughly drawn a base in for now to get an idea of how that could sit. I'm gonna tackle these as two separate pieces, so I'm not overly concerned at this point about getting that right. So the automotive influence has ended up being car seats, which you can kind of see in these sketches. You could see this as a headrest. The main body is the, the seat itself. You've got this split down the side, which is kind of like the front and back of the seat. So material wise, you've got the front body, which is gonna be made from forged carbon. You've got the pad in the middle that holds a charger, which is going to be a flexible polyurethane. And then all the other components are either going to be cast or directly 3D printed. So I want to start prototyping as early on as I can, just to make sure I've got a good base to work off. So rather than designing the entire thing, I'm going to take the front profile. I'm going to do a few different versions of it and then laser cut those with the pad, just so I can see what the phone's like physically held up to it, what you can see around the phone, see if the charger fits within the pad and just make sure all the proportions look good and it's gonna work as the base for the design moving forward. So the only known dimension at the minute is the charger itself. So I'm gonna measure it, sketch it in, and then I can build the other profiles based on that as my main reference point. Once I've drawn that in, I can start roughing out the profile in relation to it and then offset that profile inwards to create a shape for the pad. I can then make copies of the first profile and make changes to each one, so I've got a few different versions to work with. Once I've done those, I can send them over to the laser cutter to make some initial draft prototypes. I'm engraving an area on each one underneath the pad. This is where a little cover is going to sit to cover the bolts that will hold the front profile to the base. I'm also numbering each one so I can keep track of what's what and kiss cutting the areas where the pads are gonna sit. As a starting point, I'm cutting five profiles and five pads. Now I've got these in the physical form, I can decide if I like any of them or if I want to go back and do some of the versions. I've cut some profiles to make up a base, which were based off the last sketch that I did. So now I've got a new starting point for that. But now I've got all these pieces that I can start assembling together. 
it's going to be the first point where I can start seeing the proportions and scale of the design, but I can also start looking out for any limitations and start thinking about the ergonomics of everything before moving forward. So something I've noticed already is that these short pads don't account for the cable going through the front profile. Ideally, it wants to be contained within the pad. So the first three aren't going to be usable. But the last two I did, I did make them slightly bigger. So if I can push the charger up as far as I can, I should be able to get that bend and keep it all within that pad. The main ergonomic limitation I can test straight away is whether I can move the phone easily or not. I'm looking to see if the shape of the profile is going to interfere with gripping the phone as well as seeing if there's enough gap to get my fingers round to remove it. It's important that I'm aware of any potential ergonomic limitations at this point as those are going to have influence on the design and vice versa. So out of all of these, I like Profile 4. I think it looks the best proportionally and it's got the bigger pad on it so I can keep that cable contained within it. The main things to note from having this assembled now is the angle. Uh, I picked 15 degrees as just a starting point, but I'm going to use that moving forward because it looks like a, a good viewing angle and it seems to make it really stable. So I'm happy with all of that. The first change that I need to make is the width of the profile because you haven't got enough room at the minute to get your fingers behind and remove the phone easily. So I think I'm going to reduce that inwards, have that as the front profile and then have the sides of that tapered down to try and free up a little bit more room behind the phone. Or my other option is to push the pad further forward, which will set the phone off slightly, again, giving you a bit more room behind. Now I'm aware of the initial limitations, I can start building out the first 3D model. I'm tackling this in stages. So first I wanna do an initial draft of the front layer of the front body along with the pad. This is so I can eliminate the issue of the gap to remove the phone early as the rest of the model is going to be dictated by the shape of this front section. Once I've done that, I can create a shell of it and do my first test print. So I'm doing the rest of the prototyping on the Ultracraft Reflex printer that Hagears have sent me so I can complete this project. Some of the final end use parts are going to be printed on this printer as well. So early on, I'm going to be able to get a good sense of my tolerances and see how these parts are going to assemble. The resin I'm using is their PAU10 resin for the prototypes and for those final parts. This is an ABS-like resin, so it's got high tensile strength, good impact resistance and high dimensional accuracy, so it's going to be perfect for this kind of product. This is a closed loop ecosystem, so the slicer knows the properties of the resin, so I don't have to tweak any of the settings, I can pretty much just set and forget. I can just send the file from the slicer to the printer, it'll preheat the resin and dispense the right amount of resin needed for that print. So when it comes to the point of batch printing the prototypes and the final parts, I can just leave it to print without having to check on the resin levels and just carry on with other work. The wash station is also a part of that same ecosystem, so I can send that same sliced file to it. It knows all the parameters of the print and it'll calculate the duration of the wash needed for those parts. So now that first print's finished, I can prep them and remove all the supports. I like to do all the cleanup before I cure the part because the resin's softer at this point and it's easier to get those supports off and remove any of the little nubs by clipping them or sanding them off. The cure station's also tied into this ecosystem. So again, I can send that same sliced file directly to it. It's gonna create a profile for the correct cure cycle for the parts printed. So there's no guesswork with the timings and everything's gonna be consistent. The Cure Station UV cures, but it's also got a heating function. This is going to come in useful later on in the project because I've got to print a rigid mould where I'm going to cast a flexible polyurethane resin into it 
that'll go over the charger holder to form the pad. That's going to require a heat cycle to exotherm properly due to how thin the pad's going to be. I've left a link in the description where you can find out some more information about this printer and the ecosystem. Now I've got the first print done, I can start getting a sense of where to take the design and things I need to change. The first being the taper that I mentioned. I did put the taper on, but I also added a chamfer to the top edge, which has kept the top edge or the top profile wide still. Uh, so you don't quite have enough room. It's definitely better. But on the next one, I think I'm going to try it without retaper that just so that front profile is a little bit narrower. Um, I haven't moved the pad. I've kept that the same depth. So there is always that option still just pushing that out. But I reckon a balance of the two should work. So I'll make those changes to the next one and just keep going until I'm happy with what the front profile looks like. And then from there, I can start designing the back and think about how those two are actually going to join together. The general process moving forward is design change, test print, problem solve and repeat until all the problems are solved and I'm happy with the design. As I'm refining the design and getting closer to eliminating the ergonomic constraints, I'm also being mindful of manufacturing constraints. I know that the front section will be made from forged carbon, which is the process of compressing chopped toe and resin in a mold. As the part and the mold are rigid, I have to be mindful not to include any undercuts and ensure that all the angles are drafted so I'm able to release it from the mold without it getting trapped. So I've printed a few different versions of the front, making slight changes to each one. I've also done a version without a chamfer and one where I've added a small one back in. I've also built out the back of the front profile to give it some thickness and a surface to start building the back panel from. I've also added some holes for some M4 bolts to attach it to the base, as well as a hole for the cable to run through. From this point, I'm happy to move forward and start designing the back panel and the base. I've also printed another pad that's thicker, which I actually think works a lot better than the smaller one. These components are going to come together relatively quick because I can build off that front panel. The base is modeled from the same profiles that I laser cut as that starting point. Once these are printed, it'll be the first point since the acrylic version where I'm able to make another assembly and see if there are any other limitations that have been created since building out the model. Now all these parts are prepped, I can start the assembly. I'm using some M4 threaded inserts and gluing those into the base. This is the method I intend to use on the final version. Even though these are technically heat set inserts, I've never had any issues with these coming out when I've glued them into the other products that I do. I've also designed the charger holder. So the part I've been calling the pad will eventually be the cast flexible polyurethane cover, which will go over that charger holder. That's why the charger holder is now smaller. I do need to rework the holder though, as I've completely overlooked getting the cable through the hole and how to remove the charger if I push it all the way in. So I'm happy with how all this is looking and I don't think there's anything about the front I'm gonna change. I like everything about the design and how that's come together, especially that side split. I think that's gonna look really good with the two different materials. The only thing I do wanna change is the base. I think it just needs a little bit more work. I mean, I like the, the front and side profile. I think they're good, but I think this section where the base meets the back, I think there's just more I can do there. Uh, I need to rework it anyway because uh, there's nowhere for the cable to go through at the minute. So I'm going to spend some time on that and see what other options I can come up with. I've referred back to my reference images for some ideas on what I can do to improve the base. I like the idea of an insert trim joining the two pieces together. And I spotted this little detail on the Polestar 2's new grill, which was a big inspiration for the shape of the insert trim that I've come up with. Throughout all the versions, I've printed different prototypes to get me to these components. And after a lot of tweaking, 
I'm at a point where I'm happy to call these the final versions. To start the assembly, first I've got to glue in some magnets. I've got four in this back panel that covers the cable and some of the fixings and two in the front insert because that wasn't secure enough by just pushing that over the bolt heads, which was the original plan. I also made a little piece that goes behind the bolts at the front for the insert to attach to, which also has magnets in. I'm also using the same M4 inserts as I did before and gluing them into the base and the charger holder. The new charger holder has clearance for the cable and the hole to remove the charger. The front also has holes now so the charger holder can be attached. I've also added a shallow pad to the inside of the back panel. This creates a slight gap between the two front pieces as a bit of an added detail, so a nice little shadow gap. I'm really happy with how the base looks compared to the earlier version. I feel like it leans more towards automotive design and I like how it joins the two main elements together. So the only thing I'm missing at this stage is the flexible pad that goes over the charger holder and I've kind of split that off from this main prototyping stage because it's a completely different process but what I have done is made sure I've got all the clearance I need for that to work when I come to do it. So I've basically based the charger holder off this pad from the earlier version so I've built from the inside of this so as long as the pad matches this spec because that front never changed either and I know that that fits within this new one, that should work without any issues. The next thing I need to do is split this all down because I want to paint it all to get a better idea of how it's going to look as the final version. Obviously, I can't do anything to replicate the forged carbon front at the minute, but with it being matte black, I should still have a good idea of how it's all going to look. Before I paint everything, the last thing I want to do is add some weight to the base. As it sits, it doesn't need any additional weight for it to balance, but I think having some added weight would just add to the stability. I've printed a jig to hold the base upside down and level to the opening of the underside. I gave this some thought about what I could use to get some weight in there and started looking at different material densities. My first thought was to fill it with resin, but that's only about one gram per centimeter cubed. Then I thought about a block of steel, which is seven grams per centimeter cubed but I wouldn't be able to fill the entire cavity to get the most out of the volume that's there. So what I ended up getting was some four mil steel balls. Using these will allow me to completely fill the cavity and then I can pour resin in to take up the remaining volume. The resin is also going to anchor the bottom of the base down. I've added these pins that will be submerged into the resin and once that's cured, it'll lock that in place. The final weight of the base is 234 grams. This feels a lot more substantial now compared to the unfilled base, which was 53 grams. Now that's done, I can make a start on painting all the components and move on to the final reassemble. I want to make sure I can test as many aspects of this as I can, so I've also created a fake pad that's the same dimensions as the finished piece would be but it allows me to put the charger in from the back so I can simulate the final assembly. This final test is just to ensure that the magnets will work through the thickness of the pad as well as charge as it's supposed to. So I think it's all come together nicely now that it's painted matte black and I think once the forged carbon front's on, it's gonna completely change the appearance again. So at this point, I'm happy to call this the final working prototype. 
Uh, I've been testing out for a few days just to make sure I'm happy with the overall design and I've not overlooked anything from like an ergonomic functionality point of view, but it all seems to be good. Uh, if there were any changes to be made, it is best I do them now rather than move forward and have to backtrack to this point. But as I am happy, uh, I can move to the next stage, which is going to be design and make all of the molds, which there's a front mold, that front piece, uh, which is a compression mold for the forged carbon. I've got a rigid printed mold for the rubber components of so the pad and the base, and then any of the mold that needs to be made for any of the components I decide to cast rather than print, because I'm not sure at this point if the rest of it's just going to be printed or there will be cast parts. But all of that process, the designing, the making of the molds and making these components is what I'll be covering in the next video.